Hello, I'm Toycan, and welcome back to the second channel geography video. This is also a series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I want to talk about the United States of America. I got my ranting about their place names out of the way last week, and that means that I can start talking about the weird boundaries that the US does have, uh, not with other countries, but instead with itself. That's right, the state boundaries the US has are some of the weirdest in the world, and some of the you know borders you see for not only the states, but also for cities and towns and stuff, are just some of the most bizarre and out of the world that you really see anywhere on the planet, and that's why I figured I just had to talk about the US and its weird borders today. So uh, yeah, I have actually previously gone over the northern side of America because it borders the Canada, it borders Canada. So I've mentioned that in its own video. And I've also mentioned how Western US states, they have really straight borders and it doesn't seem logical. It's not a good idea anywhere else in the world, but it just about works here because they weren't so populated when they drew those straight lines. So again, you can just about excuse it there. But the Eastern US has some of the weird and most inconsistent borders you'll find pretty much anywhere in the world. Like seriously, look at West Virginia. Look at this, like what is going on right there? Or look at, look at Delaware, for instance, what is going on with this? And in fact, Delaware is my first example, and I don't blame you if you don't remember it's a state until I mentioned it just now, uh, but Delaware is one of the most interesting examples of a state because it has not just one anomaly, it has three. So first of all, it shares this peninsula where most of its land is with two other states. There is Maryland on the peninsula, and there is also, as you can see right here, Virginia shares a little bit. So there's the very weird situation where there's like a free state peninsula right there. I don't know what just happened with Google Maps, but uh, yeah, there's a free state peninsula, which is kind of strange. But the second thing it has is the perfectly circle uh, border. It shares with Pennsylvania. Seriously, look at this. It's a perfect circle. You don't see that anywhere because it's really, really impractical to enforce, but it's enforced right here with Delaware. And then the third and final strange thing is the fact that on the uh, the New Jersey side of the Delaware River, there are small, you know, like little parts, like little exclaves of uh, Delaware. As you can see, there's like a tiny, tiny stretch of land right here. Like seriously, look at the distance on this one. It's like, what is that? Like 5.65 meters between uh, Delaware and the uh, river or between New Jersey and the river. Uh, but it belongs to Delaware because of the weird agreements they did set up. And it's just a really, really strange state in terms of boundaries. So how did that happen? And we'll go through this one by one. We'll start with the first and perhaps the easiest explanation because the Delaware River, um, you know, when they agreed the boundary of it between, uh, you know, Delaware and New Jersey, they decided to go with the definition of giving the entire thing to Delaware. Unlike most uh, situations like this, where they split it down the middle, Delaware decided they wanted the entire river. So they actually got it. The entire river belongs to Delaware up to the high point on the New Jersey side. And the high point, you know, that the highest point, that's fine until the land starts to change. As you all are probably aware, land eventually starts starts to change in these sort of situations. And that meant that when land was reclaimed, even naturally or unnaturally, that land belonged to Delaware because it was previously part of the Delaware River, which belongs entirely to Delaware, which means, again, any part of reclaimed land technically belongs to Delaware in this really weird situation of like, they don't enforce it, they don't administer the land, uh, but it does belong to them. And yeah, the hugest stretch is found just over here, which is the Delaware River Nature Reserve in Delaware, which I just, <laughs> like, why, why does it need to exist? It doesn't really, but it's kind of fun regardless. So uh, yeah, the second uh, weird Delaware uh, border thing is their perfectly, uh, you know, circle border with Pennsylvania. The reason this came about is so strange because, you know, when uh, Pennsylvania and Delaware agreed their borders, they were like, okay, we got to finalize this thing. I know you just set up as a state. How about, uh, and then, you know, Delaware cuts in. They're like, how about we make it a perfect circle? And they're like, oh, I guess that does work. And somehow the two sides just agreed that, yeah, perfect circle is the right way to make a border, not a straight line or a series of straight lines, just a right, a perfect circle centered, by the way, around Newcastle. So it's a 12 mile uh, like radius line around there. It would cut into New Jersey, but it's bounded by the river too. And yeah, that's the fun situation of their border. Uh, it was actually it previously went all the way till it hit the straight line here, but then they claimed this part of land here because no US state owned it. And that is how Delaware got their very strange <laughs> <laughs> like perfect curve around there to the river. So the third part is the thing of like, wait, so if Delaware, like Delaware is one of the smallest states, you don't think about it too much. Um, and why, why does it not own all of this? Like, you know, why are they so tiny basically? And that is because uh, the peninsula, the very first part of it was owned by Virginia. Virginia was the first of the three states on here. And that's because they settled around the bay. They just settled on both sides of it. And then they decided, you know, the, the British decided, why don't we set up another colony just to the north? That colony eventually became Maryland and they got the entire rest of the bay thinking that's all just fine. But then it turned out Delaware existed and they merged that into their thing. And then Delaware and Maryland, they both had claims to the entire peninsula and they decided just to split it down the middle. Uh, and that's how they ended up where they are right now. So yeah, that's how you end up with the weird situation where free states split a, pen, uh, a split peninsula in just the weirdest way possible. You almost have to drive through the other states to get through them. It's it's just weird stuff, but that does happen right there. So anyway, going back to that first reason I mentioned. So Delaware has the, oh, by the way, 
I want to mention, Delaware is basically the same thing as a micro country in Europe where it's really small, it's really not populated, and the only reason they're quite famous and they have a lot of wealth is because they have really lax banking laws, so all the banks set up there and there's a lot of wealth in Delaware because they have low taxes and it, I know, it's kind of funny, they, they function like a micro country in Europe, even though they're like within the US, so they're like a micro state almost, but that's what Delaware is. So uh, yeah, I mentioned how their river, you know, changing course is the reason that they got new land, and this is actually the same reason that New Jersey benefits on the other side of their state with New York. So yeah, if you've ever looked at New York State. It's one of the weirdest shaped states and the reason is because they got the colony um, you know, off at the time New Amsterdam and then kind of just followed the river up. But New Jersey and them had some complex negotiations uh, sorry, Pennsylvania and them, uh, sorry it was New Jersey and them, had some complex negotiations about how that did work and at least the situation like this. But the weird thing in their border is I think this it's twofold. First of all, New York City is made up of five boroughs. That's the first thing you learn when you go there. There's Manhattan, there's the Bronx, there's Queens, there's Brooklyn but there's also Staten Island. Staten Island even though it's like all the way over there separated from the rest of the state, like now there's a bridge, but you know, previously it was much close to New Jersey, technically belongs to New York, just because weird how agreements work. Uh, despite that, a lot of the New York metropolitan area, you know, places that, like Manhattan is closer, you know, to a lot of parts of New Jersey than it is to other parts of New York. Like it's, it's crazy how that works, but it is uh, true. And, um, this also leads to the weird situation where Ellis Island, I mentioned this very briefly last week, there's a New York, uh, you know, enclave on the island and then it's surrounded by New Jersey. And the reason for this, again, I found to be funny, the, it's it's kind of the, the rule between states of like the, originally this used to be an island that should belong to New York. When the two states signed an agreement about, oh yeah, so who does this island belong to? It was New York's island. However, the water around it belonged to New Jersey. This was all New Jersey's water and that was fine. Uh, but when they reclaimed the uh, the rest of the land, New York was like, yeah, we're, we're expanding our island. We're reclaiming it with more land. But uh, again, following precedent from other states, uh, the Supreme Court actually came in and decided actually, that land was reclaimed in New Jersey waters, so it belongs to New Jersey, which means you have this very funny situation where there's like the old island enclaved by the new island, and it's technically New York, but like not in any functional way, and that's a fun thing you get right there. So yeah, New York is very weirdly shaped because it's just this colony right here, and then the rest of the state they set up later to give it a border on both sides of the river, and uh, yeah, that is uh, New York, one of the weirdest uh, situations. And by the way, the south half of the state has the same population as the north half, so even though it's like much, much smaller, again, it's the north-south divide, but in New York State, so isn't that kind of fun? So the next weird border is kind of not a border, but it's more so of the name, but it is one you've probably wondered about, because the smallest state in the United States by land area, not by population, by land area, uh, is actually Rhode Island. And you might have wondered, if you've ever looked at Rhode Island on a map, why is it called Rhode Island? Like it's clearly, I mean, I'm, I'm no geographist, Although, I mean, in this case, I, I don't know what a geographer Stephen is, but I'm not one of those, but I can tell you. I guess it's the geographer, isn't it? But <laughs> uh, I, I'm no geographer, but, um, you know, what's the deal with this? It's clearly not an island. So, yeah, the reason that Rhode Island is called Rhode Island, despite not being an island in any sense of the word, um, is because the original colony was set up on this island right here. It's not called Rhode Island anymore. It's got a, a different name, which I'll get wrong if I pronounce it. But, um, you know, it, it, this is the island right here that was pro formerly called Rhode Island. And then the full name of Rhode Island is actually Rhode Island, and the Providence Plantations. However, uh, kind of like how countries have full names that are shortened, so, uh, you know, the United States of America is called the USA, but people are America. In the same way, France is called the French Republic, but people just call it France. Uh, Rhode Island and the Providence Plantations is just always shortened to RI or Rhode Island. And that is why Rhode Island, you know, th this island right here is the Rhode Island part of it, and this is the Providence Plantations, and that's how it ended up like that. And as a fun little fact, their borders are so, like, they're, they're kind of messy like this because they had a huge compromise with Massachusetts about how their border would go. It was actually decided by the Supreme Court, which apparently just decides all these sorts of things. So there you go, Rhode Island, there's the reason it is why it is. Very square, very small, and the second most uh, densely populated state in the Union. I think New Jersey's first, I'm not mistaken. So another New Jersey mention, isn't that wonderful? So yeah, let's move on from uh, talking about these states to moving on to talking about West Virginia. I, I, I mentioned very briefly last week about West Virginia being not even as westmost as Virginia. The westmost point of Virginia is more westmost than the Basically, as you can see, Virginia goes further west than West Virginia. What's the deal with that? Why is this not North Virginia or whatever? And although the explanation for that is like just kind of like the origin of how they were saying up the thing, why does West Virginia exist in its current borders in its current strange state? Which, by the way, doesn't have access to many resources, which leads to the weird situation it's in right now. Why did this happen? Why did this happen at all? And the simple state of reason is because West Virginia split from Virginia because of the Civil War. The um, obviously Virginia wanted to join the Confederacy, uh, but all of most of West Virginia decided, no, nah, actually, we don't want 
want to join that. And uh, if you look at the vote, this is from 1861. You can see how actually in the original one, most people voted no. Red is no, green is yes to join the Confederacy, not the Union. Whereas, um, you know, this is uh, people who voted to join the uh, Confederacy, green. And then red is uh, voting to, join, uh, to stay in the uh, Union. So they split the state into two vaguely along those lines as you can see like that's why you get the weird situation of the little like panhandle over there that's because of the vote they divided it by loosely those lines again you can't divide it perfectly by those lines they missed out these states right here but that's how that's how they decided roughly to draw it and that's how you end up with the very weird situation of west virginia looking like that because they previously wanted to set up a state anyway and this was just a good excuse and then when the the you know the uh then when the war was over the civil war i guess you call it was over uh they decided to reward west virginia by letting it remain a state so they there you go there is West Virginia very weird state got a lot of <laughs> strange things going on not least its borders and those borders exist because they cut off Virginia based on a vote they held in 1861 so I don't know voting's important it might split your state in two and you want to be the I guess in that case you'd want to be the West back when it was split but you know it's it's important is my point so moving on from that let's talk about the uh, next weird state anomaly because I feel like you can't mention weirdly shaped states without saying Michigan What's the deal with that? Why does it own this part to the north, which is connected only by this one bridge, by the way? What is the deal with that? Um, and the simple explanation for this one is uh, Ohio and Michigan have this huge rivalry. Like, so one of the biggest between two states, I think, in the unit all. They're some of the only two states that have literally fought battles with each other. It's, it's complex, and the simple reasoning is, like, Ohio and Michigan actually had a border dispute. And although Ohio won the dispute because they were a state and Michigan wasn't, uh, it led to the situation where, you know, again, the, the country of America decides to just compromise and like make it better for Michigan by being like, look, you can have that land to the north. Look at all the land you have. It's all yours. And uh, again, that's a very brief, very uh, <laughs> simple explanation. But that is how Michigan ended up being so far north and getting this weird part of what looks like it should be a part of Wisconsin, right? Like, I mean, I'm just saying, logically speaking, it seems a bit weird they cut it off, but they cut it off to give to Michigan. And uh, yeah, that's how that is right there so yeah the funny thing about michigan by the way is they have that north south divide again where like the northern half is like mostly rural and the southern part of the you know the main uh, thing is mostly uh you know urban with stuff like detroit which is one of the fastest shrinking cities in the u.s it's actually quite sad but like fun fact regardless right anyway with that said let's move on to the final weird border because um again i mentioned missouri very briefly last week and how it's very interesting because it has uh, two states uh sorry it has two huge cities both on the sides of its states. Like, there's not much in the middle. It's mostly right at the very borders. And uh, the bo both the river uh, borders are based on rivers. There is the Mississippi River, I want to say, is on the uh, east side. And then there is the Missouri River on the west side. I hope I got that one right. I did. Go me. I've got river names right. So, uh, yeah, the funny thing about both these rivers is they've changed a lot over time. Same situation as I mentioned before. I'm not going to go too much into, like, oh, and then land changes sides. And at least the interesting situation where you get, again, bits of land on each side. We're like, oh, this belongs to Nebraska. How about that? And uh, one of my favorite things is that when this when this reaches its head, so you follow it all the way up till it uh, goes up to here, uh, one of the last points on the river that doesn't change sides, because again, if you follow it all the way here, you can see how it's like changing even right up to here, where Nebraska gets a tiny bit on, uh, on the, in Iowa. Uh, you can see how the very last uh, bridge they named across it is actually got uh, just the north of it. Actually has a town called Running Water, uh, just over here. Okay, I can't find running water. <laughs> but they, they have a lot of willy sized towns, really willy named towns, all on their border, and they have a border which is consistently changing because the river is too. By the way, the Mississippi is one of the big rivers in America, and one of the big drivers of its success, as well as all the rivers, uh, all, all the cities alongside it. Look, another one right here. <laughs> like, just a little town here that belongs to, you know, Illinois instead of that. But yeah, weird situation, oh, sorry, it belongs to, it does belong to Illinois instead of that, and that's kind of interesting. So let's move on now. Uh, from talking about weird state boundaries, which again, I guess you could do forever, really like, seriously, okay, wait, just, just to show some weirdly shaped ones, not to comment, like, whoa, what's the deal with that? And have you ever noticed how Florida has a panhandle? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you do that forever. Uh, but what I want to do instead is talk about, uh, you know, city limits in America, because city limits, uh, you know, in some parts of the world, they get kind of strange, like, uh, you can't even really define the city limits of Paris, if I show you right here. Try, you know, oh, actually, you can define Paris. It's London, you can't define. There's a few cities in Europe you can't even define, but the ones you can define, they look kind of like this. Like, it's mostly a circle, sometimes some weird exclaves. Like, uh, London, for instance, it has, like, a billion definitions, so it's not even defined on Google Maps. There's a billion examples of, like, places that have, like, kind of weird boundaries. Uh, but mostly, you get, like, in, in the UK, it's really tricky to find. But in America, everywhere has a very strictly defined boundary. And when they define these boundaries, a lot of people really want to be included in the city, and a lot of people really don't want to be included in the city. 
Uh, this is because the people settle there first and then the cities come afterwards. And this leads to funny situations. Um, like I noticed this first when I visited Denver the first time because Denver is one of the weirder shaped cities I'd ever seen. Like, wait, look at this. It's like <laughs> they stretched it out really wide so they could have a per uh, perfect line to the airport. So that's kind of weird. Um, they also have like some weird, like there's like an exclave of Glendale. Glendale, Glendale, by the way, is the place, the college there, uh, that they based uh, Greendale on, which is from Community. So, fun fact, the exclave of Denver is the reason that Community exists. Well, their naming is the reason for that. Um, so yeah, there's weird exclaves like that. You can see there's lots of them all over the place. It's really weird stuff there, city borders, but that's actually not one of the weirdest examples of American city borders. So, uh, the second one here, I actually noticed this because um, I had like an American, like, half girlfriend let's call her for a bit and uh, this is a confused let, let's not mention that but at one point you know she she said her, like as you know where she lived and i was like oh look into that you know because i like looking at google maps and i noticed like what is going on with this like seriously looking at the the boundaries of this place like <laughs> you can see how like a lot of american cities have the same weird thing of like they set up boundaries based on very weird criteria and then because it's always you know cities have to have very strictly enforced boundaries uh, every single city in america has something like this where it's like oh yeah that's part of the city they didn't want to be part of the city they wanted to be part of the city they didn't so on and so forth and it means that near the edges you get very weird things in pretty much any place you look around there okay this didn't have one but if we look at uh, for instance i don't know let's just go to effingham which is a funny name i guess same situation, very weird thing. And you see this with pretty much any major US city, but some states I find are particularly bad at it. Uh, the one, uh, one of the ones that like really hit me is like, oh, this is like normal-ish, is like Fayetteville right here, as you can see, just about adds up. But uh, one of the worst states for this is North Carolina. So North Carolina, one of the Carolinas, as you can probably uh, work out, has some of the strangest city boundaries. Uh, Cause if you look around, for instance, Raleigh right here, as you can see, what the, <laughs> <laughs> like what the heck is going on there is a simple question and the answer is like I don't know they they had again they had that strict laws of like oh yeah people opt in people opt now and at least the situation of like their city has very very interesting boundaries like there is just holes in it right here like what what is going on there um but uh, if we go to Charlotte, for instance, again, similar similar situation, not quite so bad, but here is Charlotte. And then if we follow the road uh, to the west of Charlotte, you can see that each of the towns you find in the place, as well as having interesting names like Kings Mountain, uh, like Shelby, uh, for instance. Then you get one of my favorite ones, you get Lattimore. But my favorite uh, state boundary, uh, city boundary in America, it's technically a town, I think, but towns and cities in America have no real distinction to them. So Lattimore, as you can see, like almost the perfect circle, but Mooresboro, I think it's the closest I've ever seen to a perfect circle sized city. That's right. You know that perfect circle thing I said doesn't really exist anywhere in the world? They almost made it happen here, but I guess they didn't They didn't use a compass when they did it. So they're like, okay, we're gonna draw a circle around our city and oh, damn, we did it. Oh, okay, it's, it's fine, it's a circle. <laughs> it's like when you play the uh, the circle game in um, Super Mario Odyssey and you, you don't end up near the center and you just kind of correct it and say, no, 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 that's that's a perfect circle. But yeah, Moresboro, almost a perfect circle, but not quite. And at least the very weird situation like this where some people's land is part in the town and some people's aren't. Again, weird situation. And yeah, my point here is the American, if we pick just a random one, like right now, pick a big city in a, in, in a big state, you'll find just very strange boundaries because that's just kind of what happens. Like, <laughs> like seriously, look around, it's strange stuff. So before I go today, because um, I, I want to get like a tiny bit of place name ranting out there. Like, okay, we've had like 17 minutes of talking about weird boundaries. So given that American place names, you know, they get on my skin a little bit, let me just have a minute to complain a little bit more. Okay, just a little bit, just... I don't complain, just, just a little bit. So first of all, uh, this is one I missed last week. It's one of the biggest examples. One of the states in America is literally called Georgia. Uh, that is the name for country in like the Caucasus, like arguably Europe, um, but you know, Europe slash Asia slash the old Soviet Union. But there is a state in America that has the same name. And at least the funny situation, um, I heard a story of someone who lives in Georgia who's like, oh yeah, so some of the uh, the old men in the bar, when they heard that Russia invaded Georgia, you know, a few years ago, they got really angry and got ready to pump their guns because that's the thing they thought was happening. Because, yeah, there is a state, one of, you know, the state where, you know, uh, Stalin was born is the same name as the state in America. And whatever, you know, they, they have the same name, that's fine. But then two of the major cities, two of the biggest cities in Georgia are called Athens, Georgia. You know, one of the airports is, in, I, I think one of the big airports is in Athens, Georgia. And then the uh, one of the other big ones, again, there's a fairly largely size airport here is Rome, Georgia. There is literally a place called Rome, Georgia in America, in, 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 in uh, you know, Georgia. And uh, yeah, that means that if you're in Georgia, you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm in Rome, Georgia. 
And you're like, wait, are you in, are you in like, you know, the capital of Italy? Or are you in the country that Stalin was born? And I'm like, oh no, no, I'm close to Athens now. And it's like, <laughs> what, are, what are you doing there? And yeah, basically, that's the annoying thing about, uh, you know, Georgia in particular. They've got, they've got a lot more of like smaller cities, but like those are major cities of those names. So that's kind of weird. That's kind of strange like that. And then finally, I think one of the worst offenders as far as, um, one of the worst offenders as far as name, uh, places name goes. Because I, I noticed this when I was looking at Virginia early, because I was like, oh yeah, look at Virginia, isn't it kind of interesting? First of all, they have a place called Newport News. Like, seriously, you're gonna... Like, that's the name of like a convenience store, not a town. But no, they call their place Newport News. That's kind of fun. Um, they have, uh, obviously, uh, looking around here a little bit more, the Isle of Wight is, I think, the biggest offender. Because, like, seriously, what... Like, the Isle of Wight is an island. I know, I know, I know, I know the reason Americans have British place names, but, like... If you're gonna pick a place to name your place, you can pick anything, but you can't call it the Isle of Wight. It, this place is called an island just because they're like, you know, uh, Isle of Wight's a nice place, we'll name our place after there. And yeah, kind of annoying right that, right? <laughs> and yeah, basically we could go over silly place names forever. But the last example, the one I forgot to mention last week is, um, so I, the first time I went to America, I went to Boston and uh, I, I think I like caught the subway train to uh, Harvard just cause I, I, I don't know, I, it was just one of those things where it was like five in the morning, whatever, you know, like I, I wasn't thinking that, that great. But the, uh, the place where Harvard, which is America's, I think fifth best um, university. Uh, and basically one of America's best universities is located in Cambridge. Guess where the best university in the UK, or tied best arguably, uh, and the best in the world is located? Guess what? It's also Cambridge. For some reason, uh, you know, the, the two, you know, I think it'd be like number one and number five in the world, uh, universities are located in Cambridge and Cambridge. Cause <laughs> God damn, that's just what happens there. Also, interestingly enough, MIT, uh, or Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also located here. And interestingly enough, also, this IHOP, which is standing out for no particularly good reasons, I went there for pancakes at like 6 a.m. once because it was 6 a.m. and nothing else was open. So there you go. Fun fact about Toy Cat in America. But yeah, for now, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something about uh, American state boundaries. And uh, yeah, I hope that there's not gonna be someone down below who's like, you got that state capital wrong because I didn't even mention state capitals. Yeah, what are you gonna do about that? So thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Second channel, don't care. Oh wait, uh, make sure you check this out on the subreddit. It's reddit.com slash r slash toycat. And also thank you to everyone who has been flattering me at flats.com slash at IBX toycat. I think I'm gonna put that as like a default link in the description. Because uh, a lot of people have been enjoying the idea of like support every channel you watch, not just the one channel or the one channel that tells you to support them. And uh, I'm glad about that. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.